In this video, we will continue our discussion of proving triangles congruent, but we're going to extend that discussion to include uh, overlapping triangles. So in number one, I'm going to ignore for a moment the givens, and I'm going to focus instead on the two triangles that we're uh, trying to prove congruent. We're trying to prove that triangle RSY, so in the picture that's the one that I just outlined in red, is congruent to triangle TSX. So TSX is the one that I just outlined in blue. And what I want you to pay attention to is the fact that these triangles overlap one another. Notice that the blue one sits on top of the red one or the red one sits on top of the blue one. We would consider those overlapping triangles. The most significant factor to your success when proving overlapping triangles congruent is to separate the two triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these two triangles separate from one another. So I'm going to draw the red one, RSY. Notice that when I draw them, I'm going to label each vertex. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw the blue one. And when marking my givens, I'm going to mark my givens in the separated triangles that I drew, in the red triangle and in the blue triangle. So we know that angle R is congruent to angle T. We know that side RY is congruent to side TX. And we're being asked to prove that these guys are congruent. So we're going to focus on our five methods of proving triangles congruent. In order to prove these two guys congruent, our method is going to have to fall into one of these five categories. So at this point, in looking at my red and blue triangles, I've got one pair of congruent angles, and I've also got one pair of congruent sides. There are no vertical angles within these triangles that I can get from the picture. There are no shared sides that I can get from the picture. But what is new and different this time around is that I have that pair of angles that overlap. These angles up at the top at point S. So in other words, angle S in the blue triangle is congruent to angle S in the red triangle. So looking at this picture now, I can prove these guys congruent by angle, angle side. And I'm going to go ahead and put my little outline up here so I know exactly which pieces I want to talk about or discuss in my proof. So I want to talk about angle S being congruent to itself. And that's using reflexive property with angles, which is kind of a new idea that we haven't done before. We've used reflexive property, but we've used reflexive property to identify a pair of common sides. Now we're using it to identify a pair of common angles. The second pair of congruent angles I want to talk about in this proof are angles R and T. And then lastly, the pair of sides we need to discuss in order to make these triangles congruent is side RY and side TX. So that's going to be the flow or the gist of my proof. I'm going to prove these guys congruent using angle, angle, side. These are the pairs of angles and sides I'm going to use in my proof. All right, so we said that angle S was congruent to itself via the reflexive property. And that's a pair of congruent angles, so I'm going to label that with an A. We said that angle R was congruent to angle T, which is also a pair of congruent angles in the triangles we're trying to prove congruent. That we know is a true statement because it's given to us to be a true statement. And we also know that segment RY is congruent to segment TX. And those are a pair of congruent sides in the triangles that we're trying to show congruent. And we know that's a true statement because that was also given to us to be a true statement. So if we pull these three together, now we're all set up to go ahead and conclude that triangle RSY is congruent to triangle TSX. And the justification behind that is the angle-angle side. All 
right. So in a lot of ways, this is very similar to many of the proofs that we've been writing all along. The only real difference here is that you have to separate the triangles and really focus in on looking for those pairs of congruent overlapping angles if necessary. All right, and moving ahead to number two, I'm going to go ahead and mark the perpendicular in the picture. Just a brief reminder that when you see this symbol, it means perpendicular. It doesn't mean anything about bi anything being bisected, only perpendicular. So I'm going to go ahead and mark right angles where AB and CD intersect. I'm going to go ahead and mark right angles where BC and AE intersect. Segments AE and CD are congruent, and that's going to be kind of a hard thing to show in this diagram because um, those segments are made up of two smaller segments. But if I take a close look at the triangles that we're trying to prove congruent, triangle ADC is that fella. Triangle CEA is that blue one. And again, what we're looking at here are these two overlapping triangles. The biggest piece of hint or advice I can give you, separate the two triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw triangle ADC. And draw triangle CEA. And then I'm going to mark my givens in the separated triangles. That's important. I had these right angles here at D and at E, so I'm going to go ahead and draw those in there. We had AE congruent to CD. I'm going to draw those in there. And at this point, I've marked all my givens, and I only have one pair of congruent sides and one pair of congruent angles. So I'm going to go to the picture, and I'm going to look for shared sides. These triangles both share side AC. So I know that's a pair of shared sides and they're going to be congruent to each other. So now when looking at my methods of triangle proof, these are the five. It's always got to fall into one of those five categories in order for the triangles to be congruent. It's not side, side, side. It's not side, angle, side. It can't be angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side because I don't have two pairs of congruent sides. The winner in this particular case is going to be HL. I've got the right triangles that are formed by the perpendicular lines along with a pair of congruent hypotenuses and the pair of congruent legs. So this is going to be HL with my hypotenuses AC. The legs that are going to need some discussion are AE and CD. And just a brief reminder that any HL proof must include a discussion of right triangles. So somewhere in your proof, you need to discuss the fact that triangle ADC is a right triangle and that angle C or triangle CEA is also a right triangle. Well, we're going to use the, the right angles in order to establish the fact that these guys are right triangles. All right, so here's my outline. Here are the factors that I need to discuss in this proof in order to make these two triangles congruent. I'm going to go ahead and write this one in statement reason form. You can choose to go with the flow if you'd prefer. I'm going to go ahead and start my discussion by talking about these congruent hypotenuses. So AC is congruent to itself. I know that due to the reflexive property. The congruent legs are segments AE and CD. I know those two fellas are congruent because it's given to us that they're congruent. So now I've talked about the congruent hypotenuses and the congruent legs. Now I have to discuss this whole idea of these triangles being right triangles. I knew these fellas were right triangles because of the perpendiculars that were given to us. So that's where I'm going to take my proof next. And because those lines are perpendicular lines, 
that provides us with the right angles. So I know that angle ADC and also angle CEA are right angles. I know that these guys are right angles because of the perpendicular lines. So the perpendicular lines that I have in statement three make, form, give, however you want to say that, create right angles. And because these guys are right triangles, now my red triangle and my blue triangle both are right triangles. So triangle ADC is a right triangle, and triangle CEA is a right triangle. And the reason for that is any triangle that contains a right angle is a right triangle. And I'm going to cite statement four because statement four is the statement in which I discuss those right angles. So now if I go back to my outline up here, I've discussed my pair of congruent hypotenuses, made mention of those pair of congruent legs, and I've also discussed the fact that these triangles that we're trying to prove congruent are right triangles. At this point and only at this point am I all set to go ahead and conclude that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So these two triangles are congruent. I know that they're congruent because of HL. And the statements that I want to cite are statement one, which talked about the congruent hypotenuses, statement two, which talked about the congruent legs, and statement five, which established the fact that we are indeed working with congruent triangles. All right, so you should have some really good stuff to talk about with respect to key ideas and important takeaways from this video. Once you've gotten that down and gotten your thoughts wrapped around about what we just saw and did, then you can go ahead and see if you can apply what you've learned in order to write the proof for number two.